So on 2C, again we're solving by factoring, and uh, the steps are we get 0 on one side, then we factorize, then we do if A times B is 0, A is 0, or B is 0. We went over that in question 2A. So the first step is get 0 on one side. How would you get 0 on one side on this? Well, wouldn't you subtract 5x squared from both sides? Right, and that leaves you with x cubed minus 5x squared. I'm going to put it in descending order of exponents, plus 4x. See, that's standard form of a polynomial, equals 0. So you got to have your exponents, the highest one, then the next highest one, then the next highest one, and so on. So that's the first step. At least we did that. We got 0 on one side. Now the next step in solving by factoring is we got to factorize, right? So if we factorize this, how would we do that? Remember, always see if you can pull out a greatest common factor if possible. Do you see that we have an x term in each one of these, right? Do you think you can pull an x out from each one? If you pull an x out from everything, what do you end up with? x times what gives x cubed? x times what gives x cubed? x times x squared, right? x times what gives negative 5x squared? negative 5x, right? And x times what gives 4x? x times plus 4, right? And that's equal to 0. Now, when you're factorizing something, factorize means you keep going until you're completely done, right? So we're not done yet. Because we can still factorize this blue trinomial in the parentheses here. Do you know how to factorize that? It's going to be Reverse, reversing the FOIL method, right? Remember this greatest common factor still stays on the outside. So you're just looking for two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 5. Factors of 4, by the way, are 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Don't forget the 1 times 4. What two numbers multiply to 4 and add to negative 5? Any idea? A negative 1 and a negative 4. You see, if you add them, you get negative 5. If you multiply them, you get positive 4, right? So here are our three factors, this, this, and this, right? The third step is if A times B is 0, then A is 0 or B is 0. The only thing with this one is we actually have three things being multiplied. 1, 2, 3. So let me ask you this. If you had, just for fun, if you happen to have A times B times C equals 0, then what can you say about the values of A, B, and C? Well, do you agree with me that like if C was 0, then this whole thing would be 0, right? Because it doesn't matter what A and B are. Does that make sense? Or you could have B be the 0 one. If that was the number 0, then everything else, the whole thing would multiply to 0, right? Or you could have a b zero and then everything would be zero as well, right? Does that make sense? So if you have a times b times c equals zero, then do you agree that either a is zero or b is zero or c is zero, right? So one of them has to be zero, right? So if these three things multiply into zero, therefore either this is zero or this is zero or this is zero, right? Now we have three easy equations to solve. So solve each one of these and what are your solutions? Well, this is just saying x is 0, right? What about these two? Add 1 to both sides, what do you get? x is 1. Add 4 to both sides, what do you get? x is 4, right? So what we're getting is x is 0, 1, or 4. And that, by the way, is three solutions. We have three solutions to this equation. 0, 1, or 4. Right?